Oh, how about this from America? We're actually starting on time, so don't, don't, let, <laughs> don't anybody complain. This is the uh, December 10th meeting of the Ordinance Subcommittee to Holyoke City Council. I'm David Bartley. I'm, I'm the vice chair of this committee. The, the chair lady is away. Uh, with me is Councilor Murphy, Councilor Weiners and Burgos, and the other member of the committee, uh, the at-large counselor, she is away as well. And uh, so uh, the first, because I don't see minutes on here for some reason. Yeah, okay. I didn't see that either. Um, all right, so the first item on the docket is a petition of Holyoke Mall Company LP for a new special permit for a height limitation for 50 Holyoke Street. So I'll take a motion to take this off the table and open second. the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, do the aforesaid on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, so I have a petition here from Holyoke Mall Company LP. I know that Bill Rogalski is here, and I think the prudent play would have asked Mr. Rogalski to come to the microphone, uh, which he's familiar with, Mr. Rogalski, if you would, and then uh, why don't you tell us what's happening. Same formality, should I name, address? Yeah, why don't you do that, Bill? Okay, uh, Bill Rogalski, uh, 71 Apricot Hill Lane, West Springfield, Massachusetts, but representing the Holyoke Mall, 50 Holyoke Street, uh, Holyoke, Mass. Um, the reason why I'm here today is we, um, we currently have a uh, signed lease with Cinemark, uh, and we're looking for uh, a height variance on a portion of the second level of the former Sears building at the south end of the mall. We've probably got about 88,000 square feet on the upper level. We're looking to, uh, to do approximately 50,000 square feet. And I say approximately because I think the layout today is about 50,100 square feet, and it's a nine-screen movie theater. Obviously, every theater, to, uh, every theater project today is all stadium seating, hence the need to... Uh, uh, hence the need to go up. So it's very site-specific. It's very... Um, uh, you know, lease plan specific. We're not looking to, you know, put a third level on the mall. We're not looking to even develop a third level on the whole portion of Sears. Just what we need, uh, just what we need to accomplish the theater. Um, as, as I mentioned to Terry before, and I, I was talking to Patrick, um, you know, we're probably closer, you know, from an actual roof height to that 75 foot range, but based on the fact there's going to be a parapet wall. And, 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 and there's going to be some protrusions from the roof, you know, for mechanical rooms, HVAC units. Um, we'd, we'd like to have just the 80 just to make sure that we, you know, we're inside the, you know, we're inside the limit and not have to come back here and, you know, you know do something and beg for forgiveness. We'd like to just square it away right up front. So I, I, I've got a site plan if anybody would like to see the... So on the site plan, it's the uh, it's this L-shaped portion here on the top of the box. Yep. But on the lease plan, it uh, it's much clearer, so you can see it called out on the lease plan just to just to match uh, what's on the site plan. Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, so it, yeah, it's that's definitely the that's definitely the uh, former Sears. Um, okay, uh, or but what was the height going to be? Uh, so it, it's uh, uh, so <clears throat> right now the the height variance will allow you to go up to how how far of a height, Bill? I, I think that I, uh, you know, I don't have the new zoning chart, uh, but I believe it allows us the full 80. Right, and so, so, but this will be 70. So the roof's going to be seven, 75 feet above ground, but with the, the protrusions and the parapet, you think it'll be? It'll be closer to 80, and we just don't want to take any chances that we're, right. you know, that that we that we ask for 72 or 75, and then all of a sudden we've got, you know, peak peak. 
excuse me, a parapet or a piece of mechanical equipment that, that exceeds that. So, you know, 80 is the... All right, and, and I just had a question. Uh, you have a signed lease with, uh, with Cinemark? That's correct. And, and where else is Cinemark? Um, in this, are they in this area at all? Uh, they have two positions in, uh, in Western Mass. Actually, they may have three. I think they converted the one at Eastfield as well, but they're on, they're on Riverdale Road. Uh, they have 15 screens there. They're in Hadley at our shopping center in Hadley. And then uh, uh, Eastfield Mall used to be Rave, uh, Cinemark bought Rave, so I'm assuming that they've converted that as well. Uh, the plan is that uh, uh, they will continue to operate Cinemark on Riverdale Road and open up a second, uh, second theater in the market. Nice. So, say that again? So they're, they're gonna, so, they're, so Cinemark is in, on Riverdale, Riverdale uh, Road, as most normal people say it, but it's actually Riverdale Street. Yes. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then they're also at the Hadley Shop. How many how many screens at the Hadley Shopping Center? Oh, I think they're either fourteen or fifteen. Okay. And then at Eastfield Mall, what are they? What are they? I that I don't know. I want to think maybe twelve, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. East, Eastfield Mall is not owned by Pyramid. No, it's not. But uh, uh, Hampshire Mall and Hadley is. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah. We knew that. And then, um, and where, where, is Cinemark is gonna, is Cinemark's gonna go somewhere else, you think, or is it, this is? I think this will be their last position in this part of Western Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, and this is the, um, I was reading an article last week, but the new, these smaller format theaters, and this will be nine screens, but really the wheelhouse now for a new theater construction is about eight to 10 screens. This is this is more the norm now as opposed to the you know the mega complexes with you know 15 20 screens right right okay and and kind of a, unless it's proprietary but but your, your lease terms uh, not the terms not, but the, not the financial but how long is the lease would uh, is you can you can you can we say that or is that not well the the uh, the initial term will be 10 years but it's it it it, uh, it comes with options yeah, they all, yeah, of course. It can, sure. it, um, it's, it's probably got at least 10 five-year options. Well, that's, that's actually good news. I mean, we don't... Oh, yeah. No, we... Not, you, the, I think to have a movie, to have a city without a movie... Listen, we're the only city around here that I know of. I mean, listen, we, we appreciate everybody's coverage, but we don't have a newspaper based here other than HCC. I don't really count, you know, a 10-watt station as a radio station. We don't have a... We don't have a, a radio station in Holyoke. We don't have a TV station in Holyoke. And we don't, we, when we all know we don't have a, a, a daily newspaper in Holyoke, we, we, just, we just don't. And we also don't have a, a movie theater. So, um, uh, I mean, to finally have something, mm -hmm. I, I think would be, and we've welcomed it to hear it's a 10 year lease bill. And again, we have to thank you and, for, and the and Pyramid for, uh, being like a chameleon in this market is brutal. And, and uh, those of us that kind of understand, I mean, I, don't, not, I understand it with air quotes. I don't completely understand it, but uh, you, know, you see, when you read what's happening with retail, it's, uh, it's uh, competitive, yeah, you, you, I, competitive it's, I guess. Well, I, I appreciate that. We've, we've, as a developer, we've tried to be very proactive as opposed to reactive. The initial, um, not that, anybody really needs to hear the, the initial play before we got control of the Sears box back, and this was extremely creative, and we went through a lot of the due diligence. We were gonna put it in the old sports authority box, and we were gonna dig down uh, to do stadium seating, which would have been very difficult. And then once the Sears box came back into play, it was certainly it's a lot easier to go up than it is to, uh, than it is to go down, but that was, uh, the wheels were in motion for that. Uh, until this, this sounds like it might have been more expensive, but that's, uh, it would have been more expensive, and it certainly would have been more challenging, um, uh, you know, to have because Target is right above it. So you know, from a structural steel standpoint, um, to support Target and to eliminate uh, columns in uh, and, and sight lines in a movie theater was going to be a, a, a huge challenge. Yeah, as often as I am at that mall, which I never, I mean, I, I'm up there at least three times a week, and that's for my mail or whatever it is I have to do, but mainly for my mail. Um, it always, the mall just amazes me. It just always seems up to date. I don't think it ever went, I mean, that mall's not like a young pup, and it still seems like it's, you know, the, the architecture and the lighting 
and uh, the skylights that we put in, and uh, it just seems like it's uh, you know pretty modern architecture. I don't see you know, yeah, at least a, the, the, you public, know, the public areas. Maybe not your office, Bill. That's kind of a dun dungeon esque, but well, but that's but, that's that's a different conversation. Right. But no, and and again, I appreciate the kind words. I think you know we in the last you know back in fifteen sixteen we put about six million dollars into the common area tile and lighting and um, soft seating areas and uh, but you know I can't speak to when the original design, but it's pretty pretty traditional finishes. You know, it's tile, it's glass, it's wood, it's you know it's it's. There's nothing in it. You'll go into some malls today, and they clearly have an 80s feel with some crazy colors and what at the time was modern art. Fortunately, we uh, we don't have any of that, so we're, we're pretty traditional. Yeah, uh, grateful for that. Now, uh, we are in a public hearing, but I always like to say, if you know, the counselors have questions at this point. Okay, uh, so we are in a public hearing. Uh, does anyone from the public... Uh, uh, Bill, did, did you cover all your bases? I did, unless anybody has questions. I'm, okay, I'm, well, we'll, we'll stay there just in case. But, but uh, does any, uh, well, we really know, does anyone from the public care to speak on this? Uh, okay, if you would, yeah, Bill, if you just kind of hang back, and then uh, if, this, if the gentleman here would just uh, simply state your name and address, and uh, you'll, you'll have up to uh, a reasonable amount of time. Uh, Patrick Provost, 42B Lower Westfield Road, and uh, I just would like to voice that I've lived there all my life. I've seen them all built. They've been perfect neighbors. And to have this vacant building utilized for a new movie theater, I'm just in favor of it. I'm on the butter. And the mall, if there's any real problems, you just give them a call and they'll answer it. So. I'm in favor of them having a permit to build a what extended height for the movie theater. Okay, Mr. Provost. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you coming here. To, uh, I don't think we met, but uh, we're, we're honored to have you here. So thank you for coming to City Hall. Um, anyone else? Okay. Uh, do counselors have questions on this just, application? Just in the. Councilor Murphy. Okay, I mean, I don't have a major question. No, I just so 80 feet is the maximum height from if someone was sitting in the parking lot, it's 80 feet up. Right, that's going to be the okay. max elevation. And it's only in the Sears building. Correct, okay. and it's not even the whole portion of it. Right. Where it's it's just that front right. 50,000 feet. And I know you indicated you don't want to go too far because of what happens. You don't. You have enough issues getting people into all the spaces you have. But let's say the theater did well i mean and they said we want to expand could you expand with what you're doing under the restrictions that you have planned or would it require a new permit i'm i'm sure we'd have to come back for a new permit to uh, again because our, our request is very specific for approximately fifty thousand. we didn't want to you know I, I, there there's no need to do it right now and and again this is Unless Cinemark, you know, in maybe in 10 years, you know, but right now, the, you know, the, this is the prototypical new design is eight to 10 houses. So uh, I, I don't see that changing any anytime soon. Um, you know, with the new stadium seating and everybody is under a, reg, uh, a reservation format now, uh, it's almost like the airlines, you know, where they're, you know, cutting back on flights, but they're filling every single seat. That's pretty much what the new model is designed to do. It's less seats, but pretty darn near, I'm not going to say 100% coverage, but, you know, 90 to 95% seating ratio coverage. Okay. Assuming this passes, in which I would be expecting it will, but if it, if, if it passes, how, much, how long do you think before uh, this is done and Cinemark starts to move in? If, if, if we, I mean, we've got, we've got plans into the city right now for demo and structural steel. Obviously, we, you know, it's all predicated on getting a permit right. uh, and a building permit. Uh, but in a perfect world, uh, we'd be showing movies this time next year. Yeah. Okay. And, and just, you. just your city steps, uh, Bill, uh, you, you, you have to get a, go before, you know, you need all sorts of permits from building, good building commissioner, and you need a demo permit as well? Right. Okay. Uh, planning board? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. So just because no, so it's inside the four walls. So if it goes to the full city council and, and let's say it passes, then we've got that 20 day wait period. Um, but again, 
uh, with the typically with the city, you know, once we have a plan into the city, even even though it may not be approved, we can generally pull a demo permit so we can kind of get that portion of the project started. And then uh, then from there, we're off to the races. You know, it's, it's going to be really the, uh, the structural steel is going to be the key component. More, once we get the structural steel and the, and the roof raised, then things will click pretty fast. Now, now who owns Cinemark? Uh, I think they're, it's, it's Cinemark. I don't think there's, it's a conglomerate that I think that's self-owned. It's just Cinemark in and of itself. Where is it based? Ooh. Uh, Texas. I believe they're based out of Texas. Okay, and they found... Us or, or, or you, you or Pyramid found them? Well, we had a relationship because of Hampshire. Uh, they don't have a huge presence in the Northeast, but they bought Rave, uh, so that expands their presence in the Northeast. But we had already established a, re a relationship with our our, 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 our our theater at the Hampshire Mall. They bought Rave with the showcase, right. Yeah, I think of it as showcase. So. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, where, that's where I go. Uh, you know, I mean, from my mind, it's it's the showcase cinema. Yeah, but showcase. yeah, then it was rave, and now it's now it's cinema. Right. Oh, okay. So, uh, all right. Well, I mean, I think uh, I can only speak for myself, but I'm very inclined to uh, support this. Uh, I, I just want to thank the, uh, uh, the the chair for putting this uh, this on. So, uh, uh, like once, I, like, I, once I said, she's not available tonight, um, but she she kind of moves along. And this is Ward Five, and. So we want to thank the chair for uh, moving this forward. Um, so with that being said, uh, I would consider a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Second. Motion being seconded to close the public hearing under discussion. Hearing none. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what your pleasure is, but I'd probably take, take a motion, motion to, to, uh, to, 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 to grant the special permit. To grant the special permit. Is, is that seconded? That's seconded. Okay. And so it's motion made and seconded to grant a special permit under discussion. Hearing none, on the motion to grant to recommend to, to City Council to grant a special permit. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so that's been recommended 3-0. Uh, that'll be before the full City Council on Tuesday, December 17th at 7 o'clock. And we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dolsky. All right. Thanks for your... Okay. Look forward to it. Okie dokes. So um, with that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Prost. Thank you thank for you. bringing up oh, your yeah. concern. All right, what we'll do is uh, let's get this paperwork. Thank you. I'll just put this together with this. Okay. Uh, why don't we take uh, number two up the table? Can I get a motion, please? Make a motion. motion. Go ahead. Motion to take number two off the table. Second. Motion made a second to take number, number two off the table. In discussion, hearing none on the motion, all in favor? Aye. I ordered that the contract with zip cars be reviewed to determine why the city is not receiving any revenue from this enterprise and what can be changed to make sure the city receives an appropriate payment for allowing this company special parking privileges downtown. And it appears, let's see, we, this, this is, this is um, referred to legal and tabled, uh, taken up in October, referred to legal uh, for an opinion, I guess. Um, let's see, state how it is. Wow. Uh, man, that is as good as my handwriting. I do remember we took this up. Um, Where are we so, at? So legal's here with us. Um, Attorney Barnes, where are we with, uh, with this matter? Um, we're just getting in touch with Zipcar from when this, prop, when this contract came into fruition, it was back in 2014. Um, so this hasn't been updated or looked at in quite some time. Um, I think there was some conversation in 2017 with Attorney Payer when he was here, unfortunately due to our ever revolving door. Um, not much happened at that point and chasing a representative from Zipcar has been a little bit daunting of a task. Um, I do have somebody that I have finally been in touch with. Um, so we've been discussing a little bit, but as far as creating a new contract, we have not discussed any details. I haven't even had a chance to talk to the mayor about it. Um, so there's not much happening right now. This contract remains um, 
in place until we find something new. Okay, so we do have the contract. Yes, you should have it. Okay. Okay, if you said you sent it, I believe you. I'm just, yeah, I'm just. I'm it just. may have gone to uh, Councillor Vacan, so I don't, or Ryan maybe. No, I, I, I you know, I probably have it, but we can, we can, so it, so we do have it, and, and to, to your recollection, you, you've disseminated to at least uh, Councillor Vacan, who's a chair of this committee, and uh, if she, if she received it, she would have sent it along. I, I just don't. It's Council gone to somebody. I do have a okay, <laughs> so, okay, so Councillor Murphy, who's the maker of the order, did, and Councilor Murphy, did you um, did you want to make a comment on this? Is what since you yeah, if I if I can, I mean, I, yeah. there's a couple of things I I read the the, the uh, contract. Uh, my first and and this keeps coming. I know Councilor McGivern has made this point quite a few times that he doesn't think it's it's legal for us to lease out uh, public parking spaces. So that was one of my things. I'm hoping to find out a little bit more about that. Uh, the second thing was, and again, I don't know this, I wasn't here at the time, but uh, that those two spots were governed by ordinance as, as regular downtown parking, and that the ordinance has never been repealed, and we just took those two uh, parking meters down and replaced them with signs for Zipcar, uh, and, and I so, I mean, if, if I can ask, if the law department could check to see if, in fact, there is an ordinance still standing for those two spots where Zipcar currently is, number one. Number two, if, and I tried to find, and I tried to look at state law, because Councilor McGivern has em emphasized several times that state law prohibits us from doing this. I've tried to find if, in fact, that's, at the, I can't find is state law where that is, but if Crystal, you could look to see if, in fact, we are prohibited from providing uh, private parking uh, on a public public road, if you will, uh, that would be appreciated. Also, as I understand it, if if we notify Zipcar within 30 days of the ending of this contract, which right now would be the first of April, or excuse me, the 14th of April, 2020. So if we notify them in March, uh, we, we would be in a position to terminate the contract. I don't wanna get in a lawsuit with Zipcar, <laughs> but I also wanna make sure that if in fact the contract is not a legal contract in terms of what we can lease out to them, uh, that we would end the contract come then. The other couple of things that went on there, there is no monthly fee uh, there's a uh, few things. Zipcar was going to offer employees of the city uh, a business membership within the first year, and they were going to waive the annual fee for the first year, but nobody seems to know if anyone did that. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of questions. They also had... Uh, uh, the, the city would designate a, con a contact person to coordinate marketing and promotion of the Zipcar service to city employees and residents of the city. And again, I don't know who, who that is. Uh, that would have been another question I would ask. Uh, and, and again, I just go back. I know the mayor vetoed uh, an order in 2016. Uh, with, from, from yourself, Councilor Bartley, Councilor Lay, Councilor Tallman, and Councilor Vacan, uh, to have them potentially move to the either the Pru or the Topier parking garage, rather than on that Prime Street parking. Uh, so, and again, there's a. I, I I also have these kind of questions. How much money? Uh, how many trips have people taken with Zipcar, and the city's getting? nothing back in that, and how much would we have if those two parking spaces had ma been maintained as metered parking, how much money would the city have taken in? And and those, I mean, I guess the only way I could find that would be go back to the history, to look, and I'm not sure we can get those records from five and a half years ago, but I mean, I, I do think we should be knowing, this is a for-profit entity now uh, that's, I'm assuming, 
doing relatively well. It's also, as I understand, part of their contract. They could ask, they, they could say they want more spots, and, and as I read that contract, we, we pretty much would negotiate with them, but we have to provide them. So, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of concerns about the legality of the contract. I have concerns that if it is legal, the city's not getting any money for it, and we're probably giving up money by, by having those two spots in a prime location for people to park downtown, uh, taken up by zip cars. So those are all my concerns. Uh, if I can ask a few things, number one, uh, as we go into, number one would be, is it a legal contract because of the parking? Not, not that the mayor can't negotiate a contract, but can we negotiate a contract for something that we can't give up? So I can tell you I did my own research into state law specific about uh, the parking situation. What comes out of that is you run into the anti-aid amendment. So what you end up putting into ordinance needs to be for the public good. So here you're looking at a public service for Zipcar to have these two spaces. It's a service that's provided to the public as a whole is what we're what I would base my opinion on is that we are in compliance with that anti-aid amendment that because it's a service for the public, it is not a violation. Um, we've talked about it a little bit about giving a parking space to someone on the street in front of their home. You're only serving that person unless you make it a city parking spot, but then any resident in the city could park there. It kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so that's, that's where we've kind of gotten into that gray area when we've talked about parking um, and what makes this a legal use of those spots because it's for the public good. Um, as to your other oh, question. So, so wait a minute. Sure. So wait a minute. If I, if I put a, if I make a contract with the, with the mayor and I'm going to put a hot dog stand and I need, I need to, I need to, I need to do it on a public street and I'm selling food to the public, I'm making money. That's that's you. You would argue that based on the uh, the anti uh, the uh, the um, the anti the law that that because I'm offering up to the public, I'm making money on this, but I'm offering up food to the public. Um, that 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 would be that would be okay. So I I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna apply I'm gonna apply next week for uh, I'm gonna get a contract with the city of Holyoke. I'm not gonna pay the city of Holyoke a penny. I'm going to take up two public parking spaces right on High Street, directly in front of City Hall. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to sell hot dogs to the public. Hot dogs, cheeseburgs, all day long. I'm offering up food to the public. Public's got, public's got to eat, right? Public's got to eat. Under your thinking, under your interpretation, that would be a, that would be a public good, and therefore that contract would be valid. That's, is that what you're saying? You're talking about a company that operates in numerous cities throughout the state. If it was what, an illegal what's, what's contract, that, what's that I'm answering got to your do question. With you public, asked me a question. Let me finish answering it. This is a contract that exists through many communities throughout the state. If it was an illegal contract, do you think that many communities would be utilizing it? My opinion is that it exists for the public good, that it is a public service for transportation for them, which is how it is allowable. As to your scenario, I don't know. We could come up with a million scenarios where it may or may not make sense. Each one is different. I'm giving you my opinion based on this contract. But based on what? But not based on a, the other municipalities are doing this or based upon state law or, a, or an There's opinion There's no yourself? state law that says we can't designate a parking space, specifically a parking space for somebody. So your opinion is based you upon what You go based on the anti-aid amendment that you have to create laws that are for the public good. But your opinion that it is for the public good is based on what? That other municipalities do it? No, that you have a service in place for transportation for the public. Fine, but go beyond that. So there, there's nothing, okay, it's, it's for the public. I, I mean, I just gave you my farcical uh, uh, hypothetical right there. Right, we could talk uh, about a lot of hypotheticals. I'm giving my opinion based on this contract and that I feel that it is a legal contract based on the fact that you're providing a public service. Right, you Crystal Barnes, but yeah, but that's not exactly relevant. So what, what? You can do your own research, but I'm telling you my research on this contract is that it is a public service providing public transportation. But when you find, when you send your opinion, I mean, it should be made clear once you do send that, that you are not basing that opinion on any kind of state law because there is no state law, as you just said. There's or, an anti-aid amendment, which is what it's based on. 
then, then, you, then you'll point out the exact verbiage in the anti-aid amendment to, to show that this is, this is valid. But it sounds like to me what you're saying is that other communities do it, therefore we're I'm okay. I'm just saying at some point you have to look at common sense as well. So we go based on the law, the surrounding circumstances, and you do a myriad of gathering of information. So yes, the fact that there are many communities that utilize it shows you that it probably has some legal basis. So then you go hunting into that. So you look up the anti-aid amendment, which is what, when I reached out to the MMLA listserv of all the other attorneys across the state, all pointed to the fact that yes, you want something that creates a law that is gonna be good for the public. Well, there well, is no specific law about parking spaces for a single I, person. I, I, I don't wanna get into an argument about common sense because that, that's not gonna get very far. But what, what I will say is what other municipalities are doing this? You've already quoted that Northampton is doing it. I believe there's some in Amherst, if I'm correct. You're talking about larger cities usually, usually utilize it. I believe in my conversations with people about this contract that it was brought here after a lot of begging to have them come in because it was a service that we wanted to provide. Right. Well, who, who begged would be, you know, I, I, whether or not that's, I mean, we didn't beg. It was obviously the mayor's office that begged. Is that, is that what you're saying? I don't know who it was. I'm just saying. Well, I mean. He also has. Well, would common sense tell you that the mayor's making a contract and the mayor signed it that the mayor's office begged? Would, well, would common sense would tell not. me that. that there, so there you go. I'll answer my own question. Um, but uh, North, Northampton, Amherst, uh, is there another municipality? Who, who else do we have in there? Council Murphy, do you have a? I, I don't. I know Northampton. I I was able to get theirs, and I do think Amherst had it. I didn't go beyond that. So they're they're, they're public meters. However, at, in Northampton, they're behind their town hall, I believe, or city hall. It, just like we would if we ever do it here. So if the, it's not a public meter then. No. Uh, okay, so that's and not they, a and point. They, and, and, and they do get paid a fee. And, I, and they I'm get a, paid a fee. Oh, there you go. So I, I, they're, 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 okay, there you go. So, so there's all right. There's a little bit of a, a couple of nuances that weren't initially disclosed um all right how about amherst i don't i didn't I, i've heard they had them but i couldn't find a contract okay so but you've determined so we have two examples northampton and amherst amherst we don't know what's going on because we don't have the contract but that was mentioned by the attorney and northampton we know is behind city hall we know it's not a public meter and we also understand that they're getting the city of northampton is getting paid a fee are those true statements i think they get a thousand and fifty dollars okay all right that's a thousand fifty more than holyoke gets um, okay. Can I just yep. ask a few more? Fire away. So, Crystal, let me just go, and, I, and I'm not questioning what you just said, so, uh, but let me just, if in fact, uh, in 2014, on January 1st, 2014, we had a city ordinance that had parking meters at those two locations, and that ordinance was never repealed, is the mayor then, or I, I would question whether the mayor then has the authority on his own to sign a contract and repeal an ordinance without coming to the city council for an amendment. Uh, and the reason, part of the reason I'll say that is because, and this is the mayor's letter, the two spot, he's talking about the, the veto of the order that you had filed and others, Secondly, the two spots in front of the transportation center designated for the zip cars was decided on jointly with the Department of Public Works and Zipcar. So my question, and I'm almost, again, I don't know this, but I'm almost positive that there were parking meters all the way to that corner, which would have meant that there was an ordinance all the way to that corner, and that the city council never amended that ordinance, and therefore, a contract designating those specifically to Zipcar would be immediately violating the city ordinance, uh, and therefore, uh, in my opinion, if that's in fact the case, the mayor has taken executive authority beyond what he legally has. Would that I'd make sense? I'd have to review the ordinance for those parking spaces and see what happened in city council between that date and now to see what was done. Well, I, again, I wasn't here, but I watched a lot of meetings when I was just a, a person watching TV in my old age. But uh, it's my understanding the city council has never dealt with uh, repealing 
and they were just given a con if they I'm not even sure you were given a contract. Councilor Murphy, let me let me yep, let me let me confirm that for you. Okay. Um, the city council never it's never been put before us. Let me rephrase this. The, the, the repeal of those two parking spaces has never been in this chamber in my time here. And I believe they were parking meters with city words. 100% yeah. positive they were parking meters. So I would appreciate, Crystal, and, and, I, and I don't want to put you in a dogfight with us and the mayor, but uh, if you would look at that, I mean, unless that ordinance was repealed, it would, I, I would have to think the mayor has done something that he was not legally authorized to do because he cannot repeal an ordinance on his own. He can veto an ordinance and then hope that we don't override it, but he can't just eliminate an ordinance. And, and again, that, that appears, as I read all these documents, read the contract, read the veto letter, that appears to be what happened. Now, and again, if, and I, oh, if, like in Northampton, it's my understanding they went, and I don't know this for sure, but I, I think they went behind City Hall as a parking lot because they didn't have to go through, uh, the mayor could negotiate that with because there was no ordinance regarding that. Uh, and again, I, I could be wrong, but all of that said, if in fact, uh, they, if in fact they cannot or they, they should not be parking there, or they shouldn't have a, a contract there. Because we have an ordinance, I would encourage the mayor to ask us either to repeal the ordinance or to end this contract by giving Zipcar a 30 days notice prior to uh, March 14th so that we can re repeal this, con or end this contract on, on April 14th of 2020. And then we made do it somewhere else where we don't have a nor previous ordinance, which I might be fine with, but I just think we got to do things the right way. Thank you. Councilor Anson Burgos. I, I, I have a suggestion. I'd like to table this until we do some more research to figure out what's going on. Just because I, I don't want to throw any accusations or point fingers or anything like that. I'd rather um, do a little bit more research and see what's really going on. That's, that's my opinion. Yeah, I'm not, I, yeah, I don't think we can act on it and but I do think we got to get more information yes, in terms of most is, yeah. the, is, there, is there an existing ordinance and therefore how did those, those zip cars get put there against an existing ordinance which says it's metered parking? Uh, and, then, mm -hmm. and then if that is the case, and I would ask that we get a ruling by the beginning of January if possible, uh, and then if that is the case, uh, that I would make the motions that I just made that the mayor would end this contract and ask us if he wants to do something yeah. else to come in and, and do it the proper way. Thank you. Crystal, you, you heard uh, Councilor Murphy's uh, request. What, 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 how much time do you need to circle back to us on, on his points specific to whether the ordinance um, is in place? I'm not sure. We are completely bombarded right now. In the no, I, I, I hear you. That's why I'm trying to ask humbly. Uh, what, also, what if I'm trying to still, we used to at one point, the date evades me, maybe 2016, because I know we were in talks about changing this. We were able to get data about like the usage of those spots and stuff. So I'm trying to get this new person that we have a contact with to give us more information if they can about usage of these spots are they still being used are they you know they can tell you who's using them city students greater public etc um, so I've been trying to dive into that more but in the grand scheme I haven't been able to get to this yeah I, I think that uh, well that's that's good information from the zip car perspective uh, I, I don't know if that's exactly what's being asked no, I, I understand what you're asking I'm just providing some more info no no I, as I, and I indicated I I, I, no. I I appreciate that info uh, and I think that's good info but I think the uh, the on point info is relative to what uh, council Murphy's uh, saying but I, I I mean I to answer council Murphy's question um, how the signs got up uh, Bill Fuqua put them up that's all they got. how the how the meters get removed Bill Fuqua had the DPW remove them that's what happened now and they're now I don't have that on film, yeah. but having worked downtown in my little shop over there for eight years and being around this city council for eight years, uh, I can tell you uh, there's no question 
what happened. In fact, I, I happened to be there the day they had the grand opening, or the, I get, well, we'll call it a grand opening, uh, there's nothing open, but they had their little ceremony for, uh, for, the zip, for the zip cars. I happened to be there in Veterans Park uh, when, when, they, when, when that was uh, ongoing. And uh, the mayor was certainly there, and Mr. Murrow was there, and I was there, and there were a handful of others from the chamber uh, were there, and um, little ceramic mugs were there, and some other knickknacks and whatever um, handed out, and and there you go. And then you walk over, and there's two signs that were were put up. Subsequent to that, uh, me, I'd only been on council for a couple years at that point, so you don't quite, even then, you don't quite grasp everything that. Uh, but at some point, I said, uh, um, I contacted Mr. Fuqua, how'd this go up? I don't know. Okay. So that's when we filed the order, um, and we found what we found out. And by the way, I, I don't recall, but in your research, did, did we override the mayor's veto? Uh, that I don't have an answer to. Uh, and I'm I would say there, there's a 19 out of 20 chance that we did. So there were about 20 vetoes that he, that he handed down, and one... Uh, upheld, but the other 19 were uh, overridden. I mean, so, the, the note I got said no, but I don't. What does that mean? That I don't no, know. what? I don't know. That's the All note. Right. That was on the note that someone sent me. Well, I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask Ryan um, to to go back. When when was what was the date of that veto letter? When, when was the the veto facts? letter was February 11, 2016. Okay. And the order was. Uh, Well, it was received on February 3rd, 2015. So that's got to be a typo. That should have been February 11, 2015 for the, for the mayor's letter because your order was February 3rd, 2015. Even though the letter says February 11, 2016, it has to be 2015 for a veto coming. That's probably, probably like so. It wouldn't work, right, Joe? So my, my order was, uh, was dated what? February 3rd, 2015. Okay, then the veto was likely February 11th, 2015. Yeah. <clears throat> and the question mark is whether, well, so some, sometime in, at the second meeting in February, I suppose we, we would take an override vote. So that would be uh, February 17th, uh, 2015. So we'd, I'd have to see, uh, I'll, I'll see Ryan, uh, whether he can just find that out from this, looking through the minutes at that point. I, I might even have myself. Um, in my computer. Um, did, did you ever hand up Councillor Anson Burgess? No. Okay. Councillor McGivern? Oh, uh, yeah, Councillor Murphy, would you mind? Uh, no. Okay, Councillor McGivern? Thank you, Councillor Barley. I apologize for being late. I wanted to make the uh, both these items. Um, I had another meeting, but um, the, the veto is, is interesting, though, because I'm going by memory a little bit, but the law is the law. There's, no, there's a veto on a, on a communication order that you know, we said this ordinance says these are meter zones. Why are they no longer meter zones? What, what's the veto? The ordinance has never changed. These are meter zones. You cannot lease out public parking to anyone. You can't even get a handicap to a specific plate. You know that's against the law. You can put up handicap parking, but anybody with a handicap plate can use it. Zip cars are not handicapped. Zip cars are like everybody else, you know, should abide by, by the law itself. But put that aside, the real reason I raised my hand, Mr. Chairman, is I, I'd like to know, and, and these are prime spots in terms of not just the, uh, not just the, uh, the old fire station building and what occupies the fire station, which of course is the college, the uh, um, a number of PVTA and a number of other different things. But since, since this veto, since this is uh, zip cars have taken over, we've lost two coffee shop luncheonettes in that building. And I'd be interested to hear from those folks to see if it had anything to do with not having accessible parking to get people looking to stop on their way to work to get a sandwich or breakfast item and a coffee. Because we, we're, we're very poor with, with options of uh, luncheonettes and, and coffee shops downtown. Well, actually, Councilor McGivern raises a really, yeah. really great point because Councilor, before you guys, Councilor McGivern came in the chambers, uh, Councilor Murphy, uh, I thought raised another great point was uh, uh, revenue lost. And and Joe, what we heard from Councilor Murphy is that 
the city of Northampton has a zip car contract because um, that was raised, raised by legal counsel um, and but we found and, and it was raised by legal counsel in, in the sense that was uh, you know the other municipalities have this and, and we hear that and respect it but uh, when we when Council Murphy drilled down a little bit he, he found out that the parking spaces in Northampton are behind Northampton City Hall that's one two is they're not at public meters and three is that the city of Northampton receives um, you know, a modest stipend, annual stipend from Zipcar. So Holyoke is actually 0 for 3 on, on each of those counts uh, with, with Zipcar. Uh, but I think your point goes beyond that. Uh, that well, definitely goes beyond it because you're saying right in there there were luncheonettes. And so Councilor Murphy's talking about the lost revenue to meters. Well, you're going beyond that saying lost revenue to potential business, maybe putting people out of business. Uh, and with, with jobs and lost jobs and all that. So that's, those are, those are, I mean, how are we gonna answer these? I don't, I don't know, Joe, but you know, those are good points. Um, I'm not really sure what we can. I'm not sure if we can quite, you know, get a, a true, a, a full answer, but I think it's a point that should be looked into. And uh, I, I know one of the, uh, I think we all know one of the owners, I can certainly talk to, uh, to Peter and uh, to Mick, but um, I'd be interested in the other that followed um, yeah. Their lead. What happened? Yeah, Council Murphy. Yeah, I, again, that was excellent points, uh, Council McGivern makes. So let me make, and, and I know we're going to table this eventually, but these are the kind of things that I hope that we can get. Number one, uh, to ask the law department to verify that in fact those parking spots are part of a city ordinance, and therefore uh, the the legality of having Zipcar take over those two spots without changing the ordinance would certainly be invalid. Number two, I would look, and I, the only way I think we're gonna find out financially, we got about four, four, of the, four of the meters next to where those two used to be, correct? There was about four after that. I, I would like to get a report from the DPW as to how much money we're taking in, maybe in a, a three month period on the parking meters adjacent to the to the two zip car slots, um, and you know if there's four and we're taking in three thousand dollars in a quarter, could we assume that we could have had another twelve hundred dollars with the other two? And that would be another thing. And then I do think we should ask Zipcar to give us a history of how many uses are there. I mean, this is a for-profit company. I, and the, the other question is, I don't know, are they paying excise tax uh, on those cars? <laughs> I mean, there seems to be a lot of questions that uh, need to be asked. Uh, and I, I, I know people are gonna tell me you're making a big deal out of two little cars, but number one, we gotta do things right. And, and number two, we wanna do things that make financial sense for the city. And maybe, maybe this does, but I think we got a lot more information we need to get before we can make that decision. With those kind of ideas, if we can ask the law department to do some of that, ask the DPW to give us a record on, on the revenues from the parking and ask Zipcar to give us a report as to how many uh, individual usages, usage of their vehicles over a 12 month period, uh, so we have an idea how much money they're taking in and, and how much we should get if in fact it is legal to have them there. And with that, if that would be okay with everybody, I would table it with the goal of getting those answers. Second, now I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I've, I've got, I think I've got seven questions kind of laid out here in okay. my crack pot notes. So <laughs> okay. I'll, um, I'll put these together for Ryan and we'll make sure that we, we get them laid out cl clearly in our meeting minutes. Yep. Councilor Murphy. Okay. Um, no, I appreciate okay. it. And again, I just, I just want to get the right, the right answer, knowing the whole answer, and then let's find out what's financially the best. And zip cars in Holyoke may make sense, but they may make sense somewhere else, and we may make more money and have still provided that service if we do it somewhere else. So, so this is not an attack on zip cars. It's a, it's a question on the process and a question on, on the financial benefits. Okay, motions, uh, motion on the table is second, being a second, not, bait, not debatable. On the motion to table, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so that's tabled.
All right. Uh, let's see here. We're, 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 we're joined by Councillor Mike Sullivan. Councillor, welcome. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Um, let us see here. Moving forward. Uh, uh, let's see. Attorney Barnes, right on point. Okay, uh, if I get a motion to take item three off the table, please. Uh, I didn't make a motion, we need to take item three. Second. Motion made a second, take item number three, discuss, uh, table on discussion here, none on the motion, all in favor, aye. Uh, order that section 62-37 of the Holyoke Code of Ordinances, hours of operation for peddlers and or solicitors be amended. And Attorney Barnes just handed the members of the committee and the city council members and chamber, a piece of paper. Attorney Barnes, you have the floor. Um, so I took a stab at it because I can't ah. find the initial <laughs> order you. or any notes or emails as to what we finally decided because this has gone through us a few times. Um, so this is a draft. Feel free to mark it up before it goes to council. Um, so what I basically did is I suggested language as the original order suggested, or at least what I thought we had sent to city council, but it appears it was much shorter. Um, so for in general, any peddler or solicitor, they it's unlawful for any person to peddle or solicit before the hours of 8 a.m. of any day or after the hour of 6 p.m. of any day. And then I put in the caveat that all other hours of operation shall only be allowable by condition of a special permit of the city council, because it's my understanding that they have to come to you for permits. So it kind of leaves that generic person who wants to go door to door some set hours but the person who wants to go door to door and needs a permit can expand those hours so it's a little bit of both um and well, I, well with, I for one read this i've read this now three times since you were and a it's in plain english b a simple mind like me can understand it uh c i like it so i mean it's like two sentences with not too many clauses, and uh, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the only drag is that the maker of the order is not here, uh, but I think you know the the train can keep moving west uh, on this unless councilors have question, a question on it. It looks pretty clear to me. Council Murphy, did you have your hand up? Yeah, just Council Murphy. So we're talking about someone coming knocking on my door. That yeah, so it's, it's a peddler or solicitor. I mean, it could be knocking on the door. It could be, I believe, you know, peddling can also be, you know, standing on a street corner with T-shirts or something. I believe there's a little bit of peddling as well or solicitors. Um, it, it covers a, a broad range of what those are defined as, which is why I think it's important to have both of those sentences in there. Plus, I know we have some permits that we've handed out that were actually in a violation of what the ordinance said, So, which I think is important to have that caveat about conditions of special permit through the city council because we've conditioned people already to have different hours because um, I think the eight to six may be what's already in the ordinance um, I'd have to pull it up but yeah, my, my only reservation would be the 8 a.m. if you're going knocking at people's doors uh, I would I would be inclined to make that a little later uh, and I'm speaking as someone who doesn't get up the earliest anymore but and I'm sure I'm not the only one uh, but, uh, you know, I think somebody coming and, uh, you know, like we, we try to get deliveries after nine o'clock and I would just, if, if, if that would be a, a problem, I guess I could go, go along, but I would just say that 9 a.m., you know, it's almost like a business, nine to five. Well, Council Murray, yep. may I just, I'm wondering, yep. th this was, if I recall, this was filed in the context of when we have cart vendors come in. And I don't think it was filed in the context of door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesmen or vacuum cleaner salesmen. Uh, I believe it was it was certainly not the most recent vendor who was uh, character among characters that had been <laughs> been, been here with with uh, with the gyro guy. I mean, he's he's just great. Um, uh, should just stand up. So this is primarily uh, street vendors. Wow, that that was that was a context to my recollection within which this order was was. Uh, before us. Um, but Attorney Barnes, do you have a different recollection than that? No, I, I recall the same, but we just have to be careful because it would cover door to door salesmen as well. So even though the context was, you know, people with carts or, you know, selling their wares on the street, a solicitor can also be someone knocking on your door. So 
Okay, so, so to Councilor Murphy's point, if we, do you want to change it to nine, Councilor Murphy? Yeah, I, I, you know, I just think that there's a lot of people that, you know, they're just having their breakfast, if you will, uh, and. Uh, so I, I'm, right. I, I, well, I don't. I, don't I, I have no problem with it. If you and I just motion, look at a typical working day between typically nine to five when we talk about a business day, I and mean, obviously it changes for different businesses. All right. So a motion to amend the eight a.m. to nine a.m. Second. Under discussion, Council Murphy. I found it. On the motion, then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that'll be uh, that'll be changed to to nine, Attorney Barnes. Um, I think the. I mean, it says, it shall be unlawful for any person to peddle or solicit before the hour of 9 a.m. of any day, comma, or after the hour of 6 p.m. of any day, period. All other hours of operation shall only be allowable by condition of a special permit of the city council. Seems pretty clear. Yep. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Councilor Anderson Burgos, do you have anything to add? Nope, it's perfect. How do you be perfect? <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'll make the motion then if, you know, and if, and if, and if the maker of the order uh, on Tuesday, if the maker of the order on Tuesday has reservations, then I, I'll respect the reservations, okay? Yep. So, so that I, I, if, if the maker wants to move back to committee, for, then I'll respect that immediately and we'll just, and we'll send it back. Is you know, but I'm just one vote. But uh, so I'll make the motion that we, uh, approve, uh, recommend for approval of the ordinance change and that uh, we have it put in uh, legal form for the next city council meeting. Second. So move. Uh, on, on the motion, Aye. Uh, under discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's, that moves, uh, let me just put my notes together. Sorry, gentlemen. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna put 12, 10, 15. Boy, my handwriting is just <laughs> shameful. Can't blame Miss Bach, I'll tell you that. I can, I can assure you that. I make a motion um, we take up item four and five together. Since they relate to the same thing. Uh, motion is made and second to suspend the rules second. and to take item agenda items four and five uh, as a package, put them before us under discussion. Hearing none, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item four ordered that the city create an ordinance which would ban the usage of thin film single use plastic bags that are being used by retail establishments. Such ban to take place within 180 days of passage of the ordinance. Item five, that the city council <clears throat> adopt an ordinance that phases out and prohibits the use of plastic bags in the city. Uh, parentheses, plastic bags are one of the greatest contributors to the trash and debris problems we have throughout the city and many neighboring cities have passed language that we can emulate, uh, period. So, uh, Councilor Murphy, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I do agree with uh, the uh, comments from Councilor Lisi, and I do think uh, plastic bags are an issue, but I do think, uh, and I've gone to Sierra Club, I've looked at South Hadley's ban ordinance, and to a great extent, the, the prohibition is on those kind of bags which are really only gonna be used one time. They're so, they're so thin, they're so uh, non-resilient, if you will, and they don't, and they don't end up uh, recycling through the environment. And they do end up being litter, and they end up causing other issues. So, from an environmental perspective, uh, I do think, uh, you know, the Sierra Club says a ban of single-use plastic shopping bags, and I think, and, and their definition is it's a bag that is not reusable. That's exactly correct. Uh, they also talk about uh, the uh, the thickness of the bag as the best use, best law is use four mils uh, for the uh, <coughs> degree of the of the plastic bag. Anything underneath that would be non non reusable. Uh, 
Uh, there are a lot of plastic bags. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a lot of plastic bags that can be reused and, and, and have a, a multifaceted usage. Uh, but I, th I do think what you typically get at a grocery store uh, tends to be non-reusable for the most part, tends to get tossed into the trash. I did try to get a <coughs> some kind of statistics from Mr. Uh, McManus in terms of how much, but I couldn't get a percentage. And obviously it's pretty hard to determine how much of our trash comes from recycled or plastic bags that are not reused. But, you know, I've looked at South Hadley's ordinance, uh, and I would really, it's the closest town to us that has a, a ban. It seems to have been received relatively well in South Hadley. We have a number of Hoyo shoppers, believe it or not, that go to South Hadley and shop. Uh, I, I think if we were to copy uh, their ordinance, which I did bring, uh, uh, which creates definitions in terms of thickness of the bag, the fact that it's got to be reusable. It doesn't ban certain things, like when you get fish and they have to put that in a certain wrap, that's all, that's all okay. And it doesn't ban things for newspapers and things along that line. So, I mean, the goal, uh, as I see it, is to try to reduce. And the 180 days that I'm suggesting when I worked at the college and we used plastic bags, basically we would get about a six month supply. Uh, and that's why I'm saying 160 days. So if we're doing this now, um, I would venture that most companies that have bought their plastic bags that are not gonna be reusable and would be part of this ban uh, would end up uh, not having to pay for new things until they're in fact uh, were needed. So. Again, I think from an environmental perspective, it's important. I've had several constituents been suggesting this to me. I kept thinking the state legislature was going to do it, and um, they now talk like it, they might do it in 2020 uh, as a statewide ban. Uh, but until that, uh, you know, I, I would hope that we will take an action. It's not an attempt to uh, create a financial burden on business. Uh, and in some cases, it might end up actually saving them money. But it is a, an attempt to try to make sure that we do what we can uh, in a reasonable manner to protect the environment. Okie dokes. Um, what's your pleasure? Well, if, if you are in agreement, uh, I would like to uh, ask... Uh, that we adopt. Uh, I, I, I should have brought car. I thought maybe Ryan was. Is Ryan here? Well, Council Murphy, may yeah. I? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, I, I hear you on adoption, but we, I mean, to, to have uh, an ordinance from another jurisdiction and not before us, I mean, I think at a minimum, you, you need to put this in legal form and, and it needs to be discussed. And if you want to provide, if, if you want to make a motion to provide a template to the, you know, I don't think you need a motion to do that. You can just do it yourself. But if you want to provide a template to uh, the law department for it to uh, perhaps draft an ordinance for us to consider, okay. then I think that, yeah, we, I mean, I don't think it's reasonable to approve. No, no, we, we have no, we have nothing before yeah, us. Yeah. So there's nothing okay. for us to approve but your order. And I, I mean, it's well intentioned, but I mean, I'm in no position to vote for it. I don't know. Councilor Anson Burgos is in position to vote for. I mean, it, the the intent is uh, okay, but uh, but I I want I want to so, see the language, and plus I would certainly want uh, at a minimum I'd want to hear I'd, I'd want something like this to the extent we could to reach out to uh, whether it's bodegas or convenience stores or supermarkets or whatever kind of a operation uses plastic bags. I mean I. I I mean, I know we've attempted in the past to do surveys, and you know, generally two people respond, but um, or two businesses respond. So, but we should at least try to solicit some type of a. And then furthermore, I, I think it would be prudent for for you as a maker's order, and, and Miss Lisi is a uh, kind of a 
that's why we put them both on the agenda yeah. and I appreciate Mr. Allen helping me out uh, digging through the uh, file. Um, and I appreciate the, uh, the committee chair allowing me to sort of set the agenda as I, as I wanted. Um, that uh, you certainly should reach out to Mr. Vega and not speculate on the status of the legislation in Boston. I, I think Mr. Vega and Mr. Hummison, he's still our elected official, um, th they ought to come back to us with, uh, with something from uh, either Senate or House Counsel. Um, you know, what is the status of it? What does it look like in Boston? Um, as you know, Council Murphy, you know, you're a veteran here, uh, Certainly, we can't do less in the state, but we, we could do more mm -hmm. in the state. If that's, that's what the South Hadley Ordinance does, we, we, we have the potential to go beyond what state law does, but we can't, do, we, we can't undermine state law, as you, as, as you know. So um, those would be my, my thoughts before we take mm -hmm. any kind of a final action in committee. Well, I, if I can. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have any problem, you know, Suggesting that, or asking that uh, the law department take the South Hadley ordinance and put it into legal form for consideration before the ordinance committee, uh, and and refer that back to us for our next meeting if that's possible, or, or our first meeting in January, or second meeting in January, something like that. I do think, and again, I I waited seven eight months before I, I kept saying I'll hold off. The state's going to do it. The state's going to do it. But the state never did take it up. Uh, or they took it up, the Senate took it up, and I, but the House never acted on what they were doing, and they're still talking. I know that. Uh, and I have no problem tr asking uh, if we can ask uh, for a uh, information from Representative Vega and Senator Hummison as to what the status of the uh, plastic bag ban legislation in, in Boston is. is uh, and again, I, mean, I, I had 180 days with two thoughts, both the idea that I, my gut is they don't buy their plastic bags by the month, they buy them by a, a significant period of time, number one, and number two, that if we did 180 days and it was the same piece of legislation that the state ended up passing, uh, then, we, then obviously we would just go along with what the state did. So, I mean, if, if you think that is okay, I would make a motion that we, uh, and I will, I will pass a copy along to Crystal that we make a motion that we re we ask the law department to put into our legal form um, something similar to the South Hadley uh, pass plastic ba bag ban and refer that back to the ordinance committee uh, and also that we request information from Senator Representative Vega and Senator Hummison in terms of where that stands on the state. Yeah, those are two of the things I mentioned. And the third one would, would be to uh, just see if what, what the take is from those who are going to be impacted, whether it's uh, certainly uh, vendors, um, the constituents who use them, um, seniors, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, look, I, I'll, I'll, I certainly want to have something in writing. Um, so I, I don't see any harm whatsoever in, in getting a legal writing before us. Okay. I, I, I don't see what, what problem that, what that would have. Because I, 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 don't, I don't think you need a vote here. I, I think you can... Um, table? Uh, yeah, you, you, we, we, I think we can table that here. Uh, I believe that you can present that, that you should email that to uh, Attorney Barnes. Uh, I, I, would, I would also have no problem if... if we you know, have Attorney Barnes address us as to when she she would want. I mean, it sounds like they're pretty overwhelmed. But um, and as you know, we're we're going to have um, you know new city council come in in January. So I mean, we can certainly table in committee and and ask that the law department come back to us for the first meeting in February. Terry, is that off the wall? No, that's fine. Okay, all right. So um, so I I'd, I'd like to um, I like to. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Warren? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I I just like to. Make a note of that. Um, I know we haven't taken a vote yet, but I just want to think that looks like that's going to. Uh... Yeah, okay, so I, I just said table to the first meeting in February 20th. In the meantime, uh, we can we can say uh, uh, we, we c you you can certainly do some uh, background information and get that draft to um, to the law department, mm -hmm. and we can and perhaps have some legal language 
I mean, if it's, if it's taken up February 20th, I mean, if the law prime is legal language for us, then then we'll, we'll consider it. Okay. That's I think, fine. Is, that, is that okay? That's fine. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, table this until the first meeting in February of 2020. Second. Uh, the motion, uh, not debatable. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. All right. So that brings us to the conclusion of our evening. I'll take a final motion. Make a motion, motion. we adjourn. Motion made. Second. second to adjourn. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.